Mike Radich here, and I'm now joined on the phone by Invicta FC veteran Lacey Shuckman. Lacey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. Lacey, you got a fight coming up this Saturday for Sparta Combat League. How's training been going for the fight? Um, it's been really great, actually. Um, my cut was cut a little bit short um, just because I didn't get the fight offer. Um, like, I normally like 60 days to cut, and I only got 45 for this one. Um, but everything went really smoothly. I had great training partners. Uh, everything just flowed really well, so I'm really excited. I feel really ready. Mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of your video blog that you've been doing for Ground and Pound TV. One thing I noticed about your training is you don't have any female training partners. Is that something that you you don't like to have the female training partners, or just that's not what's available to you? Um, you know, I, from time to time I get maybe one or two here and there. Um, I get to work with my friend Diana Ray a few times, but um, for this camp I didn't really get a chance to really work with any females. But just uh, since I started, I've always usually been the only girl at the gym, and so. Um, it's kind of nice to have the guys beat you up because they're not, they're not nice to me. You know, everyone thinks like, oh, well, you're a girl, so they take it easy on you. No, so those boys will pick me up, give me black eyes, choke me out. You know, it's crazy. But, no, I, I would like the guys because they push different pace. So, um, you know, it's not that I don't like working with females. It's just not something that um, has presented itself as often. And another thing that I noticed is you have a lot of gyms. Obviously, you have one that's in your house, so you probably you know spend most of your time there. But what would you say the percentage is you spend at all the other gyms? Um, you know, it's probably about uh, 50% at home gym and then kind of split up maybe 25 at House and Gracie, 25% at House of Pain, Boxing. Um, but I guess actually that wouldn't add up because then I have Title too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that one's kind of just a conditioning gym, so that one I don't really like count as much as for my training as for my strength and conditioning. Mm -hmm. And watching that video blog, I noticed that I think only one of those gyms has a cage. Is is that correct? Um, The Strictly Boxing is Mm -hmm. one that um, we've only got to visit a couple times, but I definitely get my cage work. We have Mm -hmm. uh, another place that lets us come down whenever we want to work in the cage, 5280 Fitness, um, out in, uh, like, southern Colorado. But, um, no, they, they let us come in whenever we need to get cage work, so that's not really an issue. Oh, oh, I see. And now you're going to be fighting Darla Harris. What are your thoughts about her as an opponent? Um, you know, she's very well-rounded. Um, I can respect the fact that she moved Colorado to get better training from Montana, so she obviously takes her game very seriously. Um, you know, she, in her last fight, um, she was more looked like she was more interested in going to the ground, but she's also very committed to her stand up too, so... Um, you know, I think it's really exciting. I think we're two really well, well-rounded fighters, and so I think we'll put on a hell of a match. I think you'll see a little bit of everything. Mm-hmm. And now you're from Lakewood, Colorado. She's, like you mentioned, moved from uh, Montana to uh, Denver. Uh, is there a little bit of bragging rights on the line here since it's Colorado versus Colorado? Um, you know, I think that we are, like, kind of equal. Um, you know, there's she kind of has her crowd in Colorado. I kind of have my crowd in Colorado. But I've definitely been around a little bit longer than her, so I think mm-hmm. I'm a little bit more well-known here. But, mm-hmm. yeah, no, I don't think it's necessarily something like that. Mm-hmm. Are you born and raised in Colorado? Yeah, I'm a native. Oh, I see. And how many tickets have you sold? You know, how many people are going to be there to support you? Oh, I have no idea. Quite a few, because at the gym they sell them too, so I don't, yeah. I don't have an exact figure, but quite a few. Oh, I see. And now, do you prefer to fight at home, or would you like to be, you know, somewhere else, you know, traveling to a fight? Um, you know, I do like fighting out of state, but um, since I've traveled so much for my last two fights, it's kind of nice to just get to stay home, be more comfortable, not have to, uh, you know, because I bring my dogs, and I always drive instead of fly to my fights, and so it's kind of nice to just be able to be in my own place for my weight cut and not have to take a week out for travel and, you know, kind of factor that into your training camp, so... No, I kind of like fighting at home just for the comfort, but, um, you know, it's always exciting to go fight out of town. Mm-hmm. I'm just curious, do you have any pre-fight rituals or any superstitions before you fight? Um, you know, I like to read my Bible a lot before I go out and compete. Um, I, you know, just do little dumb things, like I paint my nails and I get my hair mm-hmm. braided and just kind of like little girly things like that, but nothing too superstitious, um... You know, no, nothing too crazy, but yeah, I definitely just, you know, get ready. Feel, you know, if you look good, you feel good, so it's kind of one of those things that I just take my time to kind of pamper myself the day before. Mm-hmm. You're currently on a two-fight losing streak now. Of course, your last fight, a great fight against Michelle Waterson, uh, a close fight, lost by a split decision, definitely a good performance for you, even though you didn't come up with the win. And then uh, Hamasaki, uh, she's the jewels champion, and you stepped up a weight class, so... Uh, 
definitely you know no shame in either of those losses. But do you feel that this fight is a must win? Oh yeah, definitely. I feel like every fight is a must mm-hmm. win, sure. um, whether I've lost or not. But um, those two fights were kind of high profile fights, mm-hmm. so this being not as big a deal, um, you know, it's it's more of a, those two were more of a test for me. Whereas this one, I feel like uh, it's my zone. It's comfortable. Everything's kind of working out in my favor. So yeah, it's definitely always a must win situation, no matter what my uh, current situation is. Mm-hmm. Like I mentioned last time out against Michelle Watterson, a split decision. Do you think you did enough to win that fight? Um, I think I needed to be a little bit more active in the second round. Um, the third round, I really thought that I had solidified it when I got the takedown. But, you know, it's just one of those experiences where you chalk it up to learning and you go back to the gym and you work hard and maybe I'll have the opportunity at Michelle again. Mm-hmm. Your last two fights have both been under the Invicta FC banner. Do you still have a contract with them? Um, I was never signed to Invicta. Oh. They were both oh. single fight contracts. So um, they kind of understand that I want to kind of work on myself um, at home for a while. I want to fight locally a little bit more. Um, if any other opportunities happen to present themselves out of town, I'm not ruling those out either. But they have me, uh, Vic is on a, the same page as me as far as what I kind of want to do right now. But you'll definitely see me back. Oh, I see. And now I was just looking at your record, and a majority of your wins are by submission, but I've also noticed that a majority of, of those submission victories are by chokes. Is that something that you prefer to, to attack the neck, or is it just you know kind of the way all these fights have played out? Yeah, it's just kind of the way they played out. I don't really have like anything that I really like specifically like to do you know on the ground. I, I try to be just pretty much well-rounded, but yeah, they were all kind of situational. <laughs> mm-hmm. I am known for my guillotine a little bit in practice. So I think I choked everyone on my team out with one. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Your professional record is seven wins and six losses. Uh, just looking at that record and hearing that record, um, you know it's not that impressive. But when you actually you know dig deep and, and look at the names that you've been fighting and look at where these fights have taken place, a lot of them you know two two weight classes above uh, your weight. Uh, you're a 105 pound fighter, but you have fought a couple times at 125, a couple at 115, and some top fighters like Michelle Waterson, like Patricia Vadonic, like. Carlos Sparza, a lot of good names in there. What do you think your record fails to show? Um, you know, I take fights as opportunities present themselves, and something I've learned over time is that not necessarily every opportunity is a good opportunity. Um, when I first started, I was really young. I was only 21 when I went pro, and um, I right away jumped headfirst into the G Fight Grand Prix, and, you know, that was the top 115ers at the time, Jessica Aguilar, Angela Magana, at least Haigo. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, it just goes to show that I can definitely hang with the best. Um, it's just about me, you know, honing my game and getting better every day. And that's why, you know, I've humbled myself a little bit and taken it aback. Um, I just am always looking to get better. And that's, you know, the, the whole point of this sport is to love what you do and enjoy what you're doing. And I've had a hell of a time. You know, I've never, never had a time where I wasn't happy doing what I'm doing. So I just, you know, back to the drawing board and working hard. Mm-hmm. Would you consider taking a fight, you know, at 115 again? Oh, yeah, definitely. I don't rule out, because um, I walk much heavier than most 105ers, and Michelle was actually my first time fighting at 105. Mm-hmm. Sure. So, um, you know, I don't rule out anything. As long as there's an opportunity and it, it works out um, for me, then I, I don't rule out any other weight class. Mm-hmm. You've also competed in boxing and Muay Thai. Do you have any plans on going back to those sports, or are you just going to stick with MMA for now? Um, I love boxing. I'll, I definitely plan on pursuing more boxing. I'm currently I'm one and zero in professional boxing and with a 50 second knockout. So I'm looking to definitely continue to do more boxing. Um, my I've just recently been in talks about maybe starting or having a professional Muay Thai fight. So that's another avenue I'm looking at. But overall, you know, for me, it's all about being a martial artist and just being well rounded. So I definitely want to try to compete everywhere. Mm-hmm. You mentioned earlier that you're not in a rush to go back to Invicta. You want to stay local, keep getting some more experience before you go back there. And Helica Chavez, that's a fight that you wanted a while back. Uh, she just signed with XFC, and now she's at 105. Is that a fight that still interests you? Of course not, you know, looking past uh, Darla Harris or anything. Mm-hmm. No, no, definitely. And Helica is definitely something I would like to uh, take on in the future. Um, XFC had offered me a contract as well. Um, but, you know, I just don't really want to be... Um, signed to any one promotion. I like mm-hmm. being a free agent. I like being able to do whatever I want when I want. Um, so, you know, if that opportunity is presented to me as a single fight contract, that's definitely something I'd be interested in taking. Mm-hmm. 
I mentioned earlier that I'm a big fan of your video blog that you've been doing for Ground and Pound TV. If I'm not mistaken, that's a German uh, station. Uh, how did this all come together where you'd be doing some video blogging for them? Um, Elias Stefanik from German Ground and Pound TV hit me up and asked me um, if I would want to do it for my first um, Invicta fight. And, you know, I'm not really, you know, I'm kind of shy. I don't really, you know, do that. And so it, he kind of took me a while to coax me into it. And um, then my husband saw Alexis Davis's and she said, all right, we got to do this. So he kind of coaxed me into doing it. And so we decided that that would be just something kind of fun for us to do, kind of get our names out there and show people what we're really about. Because we're, we're kind of, uh, I wouldn't say that we're a secretive team, but we're private. So it's, it kind of gives people a little bit of an insight into us. Mm-hmm. Part one is right now up on YouTube. When is part two coming out? Um, it should be coming out any day. Um, I've sent him more recent footage, and uh, I'm going to send him a little bit more, and then I think he's going to put out the second one. And then I think there may be a third one after my match. Mm-hmm. A majority of the uh, video blog that you have out now is mostly just you know training and you know going through um, you know drills and, and stuff like that, and then a little bit of you know uh, your day to day life. But um, a majority of it is about fighting. Just curious, what do you do you know outside of fighting? You know, what are some of your hobbies? Uh, you know, besides fighting. Um, you know, I don't have a lot of free time, but um, I the, a few things that I really like to do is we, me and my husband, um, we used to build drift cars and. Since uh, we've gotten a little bit more serious in the sport, we haven't had as much time for that. And I, but I do, that is a passion of mine. I love building Japanese drift cars, uh, especially uh, Nissan Z cars. So that's something we really like. As well as um, we're huge pit bull advocates. Um, we fight a lot against anti-breed specific legislation. So that's another um, passion of ours. Mm-hmm. Speaking of driving, I noticed that whenever you guys are going from place to place, you're always doing the driving. Is that normal, or is it just because it's your video blog and uh, Randall had to do the filming? Um, no, Randall is a scary driver. He thinks that <laughs> um, you're always driving on a track, and so he doesn't like to follow basic traffic laws, so I typically do the driving just out of fear. <laughs> oh, I see, I see. And now, uh, my two favorite parts of this first video blog is, the first one has to be when uh, you're at the weigh-in for Randall's fight, you're working the camera and you're doing uh, you know, just a, a crowd scan of the team that you guys have, and you're talking about it, and then all of a sudden you're doing a pan over, and you, there's one of the guys on the team uh, drinking a beer. I thought that was a pretty funny part. And then the second part is you guys sneaking in to a sauna. Now, exactly, uh, could you explain why why you need to sneak into the sauna? Um, because I don't want to pay $10 <laughs> for me and Randall to go to the, the club sauna at our rec center. And uh, we do it so often that, you know, it starts to add up. And, you know, we don't make a lot of money doing what we do. And all I do is fight. That's my job. So, I mean, my paychecks only come when I fight. So that's kind of just something we do. Kind of, It's half-joking as well. Mm-hmm. Just sure, sure. It's convenient, you know. But this last weekend when we tried, we got busted. So we don't get to do it anymore. Oh. We have to take a break for a little bit so that oh. they won't remember us. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty funny. And uh, also, one of the things that was also in that uh, video blog that I noticed is uh, both you and Randall have a, a tattoo. I think it's of a, a red band and a black band. It's on your right arm. Can you explain what that tattoo means? Um, it's kind of like our wedding band. Mm, we can't wear okay. our rings into the fight, and when we're training, we never really can wear our jewelry. So it's kind of just uh, our take on the wedding band. Everyone tattoos their fingers, so it gives us a little bit something different. Mm, I see. And now, Lacey, last question here. Just curious about your nickname. It's a fitting nickname because, you know, you are a lady, but, you know, how did you get the nickname The Lady? Um, well, initially I got it um, from my old kickboxing coach, Phil Hilsebeck. Um, he, we had another guy on the team that was uh, Pat the Gentleman Giner, and so he, he wanted a very, um, he, he is a very traditional martial artist, and he wanted a very, um, classy name for me and so he chose the lady and just because I'm a little rebellious I insisted on spelling it wrong so that no one could steal it from me and so um, now it's kind of a joke just because you know I'm always one of the guys and you know I'm not that lady like so it's kind of funny now oh I see and now Lacey real quick before I let you go do you have any sponsors you would like to thank and is there anything you'd like to say to the fans um, well, first of all, if you want to follow me, I'm on Twitter at Lady Lacey, L-A-D-I-E-L-A-C-E-Y, as well as backslash Lady Lacey on Facebook. Um, I want to thank my team, my husband Randall, and all my coaches for getting me ready for this fight. I want to thank my sponsors, Puzzle Fight Gear, Altitude Organic Medicine, Botanico, um, Blue Drink Studios, Kobe On, 
Housing Great Jiu Jitsu, the shop, MMA and Fitness, um, and there's a couple other, uh, Clinch Custom Mouth Guards, um, but everyone's just been so awesome helping me get ready for this fight and supporting me, um, and I just want to thank all the fans, hopefully, you know, if anyone's in the Colorado area, you'll come check out the fight February night. Lacey, thank you for taking the time to talk. I really appreciate it. Good luck this Saturday night against Darla Harris. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it.